What's up, peeps? When it comes to organizing your business and having a system that manages it, efficiency and execution are at the top of that list. However, if you're like me, sometimes those systems never feel right. But what if I told you that there was a way to organize your business, make it really fun, and motivate your team at the same time? So in my agency, we came across this problem pretty quick. Multiple documents, multiple sheets, and it was everywhere. So one day I set about fixing that, and today I'm gonna show you how to build the ultimate business organization system. So uh, we're inside Coda, and the first thing that we wanna do is create a couple of core pages that are gonna really help us out. In this case, we're gonna create a homepage, team page. Uh, we're also gonna need a projects page for all of our projects to go into departments. And then finally a wiki. So what we'll do is we'll put all those pages underneath the homepage, like so. And now we have our team homepage and here we go. So something that's really important to think about when you're creating your system is how you style it and the icons that you use as well. If you have a really complicated or large document and the icons are all over the place in terms of style, you're not actually gonna have a great time when it comes to making sure that people can find their way around and get around your document. I like to use themes for my iconography. That way it allows me to quite easily help people understand where they are, what they're doing, and use the same icons for the same sections. In this case, we're gonna go for a medieval theme. So your homepage can be anything that you want. In this case, I'm gonna go for a uh, fireplace that all my people are going to gather around each week. My team, I'm gonna go for knights. Then projects, well, maybe we can make that uh, a bit like a quest. We're off on our quest, remember? That you're going on, so we'll we we'll have some dragons that you've got to defeat for your, for your projects. Departments, well, this is a great way to think about different adventures, different journeys that are going on inside your, inside your team. So you can be really fun and creative with this. You don't have to be as uh, boring with all the usual like cogs and other stuff that people do. You can create like a little bit of a story and that helps build a bit of motivation in your team. Finally, we have the library. Kind of like the Minecraft looking block uh, it kind of it kind of pulls it all together so you see now we have four very distinct icons for our team for our projects departments and then our wiki so we'll create our team pages and we're going to create three team pages here for my team but maybe you have more team members the team pages are like your own space that will allow team members to be in but it's their own home as well so in, in this case um for example, like your team can add their own cover photos. They can write their own custom stuff in here. Like it's not for you, it's for them. It's their own space. And that gives them a bit of ownership. So they feel like they're more part of the team. They're, they're, they, they can take ownership of the way that they work. And I think that's really important. The best way you can motivate a team is by giving them ownership and feeling like they're in charge of their own little space. And by creating these little team spaces, that's exactly what that does. So we're just gonna create those team spaces. Now we've got knights under here and I, I'm just gonna create some humans who live under those helmets. Now, if you could use female, male heads here, I have both male and female on my team. Now, it's really important when you're putting together your iconography that anything underneath these master pages, they all have the same icons. You'll quickly find as your document gets bigger and bigger and bigger, if you have loads of icons for everything, it's gonna get really confusing as to where everything is and visually on the left-hand side, it's gonna look very messy. However, if you have just the same icon for each sub-level that goes down, it's much easier to understand. So we've got Amy, myself, and then we've got Leah as well. Okay, cool, that's the team done. So now we have projects. So for the project pages, we wanna have our individual projects that we're working on inside the company. Now, because I don't have that many projects each year, I like to have sub-pages under projects, which are just for each project. So this would be like project one, and then we would have like project two, my friend Daniel said something really important the other day that you should definitely keep in mind. If you're a company that has lots of projects, then it doesn't make sense to use this subpage system. And instead, you should focus on making a drop down button and then filtering your projects like that. So um, again, we're just going to keep going. I'm going to do just three projects because we have three projects on in this example like so. And you'll give these an actual name as well. You're more than welcome to add covers add icons, um, change the page options, etc. But for now, we're just gonna go for something simple. Now we wanna think about uh, what comes under these projects. So when I complete a quest usually in a video game, so in this case, we'll have some loot. We beat the dragon, we get the loot. Victory! Now that we've got the team of all of our team members under it, we've got all our projects of our projects underneath it. And now we're gonna think of our departments. 
Departments are a great way to split your different team members into different sections. And remember I was saying about having ownership in regards to their tasks, but well, it's also good to give them ownership in regards to how they organize their notes and any other bits as well. So I like to think of this in terms of classic corporate departments. So we have a design department, we have a development department, maybe you've got a fulfillment department, logistics, etc. And it's important to create sub pages here that when your team are working on stuff, they can categorize it under these departments. It's very important though to remember to go through with your team and clean these periodically. Otherwise, it's going to start looking messy. In my case, we're going to have a couple. So we have uh, the design department, the development department, project management. Makes sense. Admin. Again, trying to keep with the iconography, maps, pins, pins on the map for departments. And that's exactly what we're going to go with for this design. And just remember, again, all of these should be the same, the same pin because if we were to open this up right now and we would have like all these different random icons, you can see straight away that visually when I open this up quickly, it takes a lot longer to figure out what's what, when in reality, if they're all pins, I can just literally read the name and that is much quicker than being disorientated by loads of different looking icons. Finally, we have our wiki. Now this is a really cool part of your business. It's gonna be where you put in all of your knowledge, all of your SOPs, the standing operating procedures, anything to do with how to do something. So it's important to make sure that you're not only periodically going through this and cleaning it, but you're using it and you're keeping it up to date. I got some really good advice from an agency owner one, one time and he said, you know, a wiki is as good as the people who use it and maintain it. And that's a really important part here. We're gonna create a sub page and this is just gonna be a template for, um, all of our wiki entries. And um, what we'll call it is um, SOP1 Google Ads, for example. And then we can always do the template. So written by is a nice way to do it. You can also use the page options and author, but sometimes you might be making all of the pages and then your staff will be coming in and writing them. So you can put written by here. Last updated is a great one as well, just so people know when it was last updated. And then we can do just some, some standard points. And you can also write some, some rules in here. So remember to X and then do Y before starting this. And then you have your, your tutorial or whatever it is that you, that you build. This is a wiki, so I'm gonna use a book to go with this. So now whenever I open up the wiki, the idea will be I can duplicate the template and then reuse it. Then in the future, when we open up our wiki, you can see loads of books. And because of code is great um, search feature, I can just type SOP Google in the top left and it will come up with all of the wiki items. So you can start getting your team to get comfortable with the idea of going up to search and searching for what they need and they'll tend to be able to find it as well. Now I'm not entirely satisfied with this uh, fireplace. So I just want to quickly change that to something that's a bit more appropriate. And now you can see we've got a very quickly themed coded document. And as I said before, you can go with anything. I've done sci-fi before. I've gone with a bit of a different looking medieval theme. And then this is our new medieval theme as well. So within our team, we're gonna to want to have some tasks and the final page that we need to make that's gonna hold everything together is our data page. Now, I like to actually give this um, a more of a techie looking symbol because it's not actually gonna go under our homepage and our staff aren't actually going to be able to um, see this because we don't wanna confuse them. What I tend to do is add this as a shortcut to the top so I can always access it and then I hide it because nobody needs to see it. And we can just keep things simple like that. So within our data, we can use a um, template here and create a tasks. In this case, I'm just gonna use a coded template, but you guys can build out your own. And I'll show you how in another tutorial how to build out a more complex task manager system. So in this case, we've got James, Polly and Joel, and they're gonna become our new team members. I've also renamed everybody's pages to match the data that the default coder template brings in. However, you wanna make sure that your team pages are named after your own team. I'm gonna bring the tasks in and we're just gonna make sure to filter here and filter for just Joel's stuff, like so. We'll do the same for Polly and the same for James. 
Now that this is done, I would highly recommend getting your team members to come in and add and change their own space to how they want it to be. Something I like to do just as a little small thing is if I'm working with a lot of freelancers and I want them to have availability to me in case they need something by maybe I'm not on Slack, but they need to book a quick meeting. It's just to put a calendar link at the top. So now Joel can come in, you can tell him that he can set his own cover photo, whatever he wants really, put notes in here, etc. Polly the same and James as well. We'll move on to projects now. So we're just going to bring in our projects table here and just a view of it as well. What we want to do is just filter and filter dependent on what the actual project is. In this case, it's the fun wrestling tournament. So you can do this the same for the other projects. I won't do it in this case, but this is a really easy and nice simple setup. I like to add color photos that <laughs> just show off what the project is about and to give the page a little bit of a unique identity. It unfortunately doesn't look like Unsplash has a photo for this. Surely they do. <laughs> Want to do a film? Six and a half hours later. How do you? Go our, our film wrestling uh, Patreon. All good. Let's keep going. So now we have our departments and we have the design, development, project management, sales, admin, etc. This is where your core systems are going to go in, and we're going to do further videos on this on how to build systems for each department. But just as an example, let's say that the design department has a meeting today and they want to have a bit of a planning page. They can create a sub page inside the design department and they can call this meeting uh, retrospective because they're doing an end of week retrospective on how their sprint went. You can do the meeting retrospective and then Coda has loads of templates that you can use for planning, meetings, etc. So we'll just use their meeting agenda tool here, bring that in and now they can start putting in the details, what the, who attended, the discussion points, the notes, the action points. Remember how I told you that it's a good idea to make sure that your team have a, uh, an archive. And in this case, I would put an archive page inside each department so that your team get used to once they've finished with these meeting notes, putting it in the archive and leaving it there. Again, they can use the search bar. So if they want to then look for that retrospective, they can. A good tip and habit is to put the end, the date on the end so that they can then type meeting retrospective 11th of May in this example. That way they won't get loads of pages with meeting retrospective and have to go for each one. Instead, they can just look for the 11th. Okay. They won't get loads of pages. So uh, I hope that video helps you out in organizing your Coda system. And if you're interested in learning more about how I use Coda in the agency, you can watch this video here.